All right, let's see what else we have here on these typical details. All right, now we have a typical detail for a deepened slab for the stair stringer support. So uh, the stair stringer, this is basically um, like a support for the stairs. So the stairs are going that way. And it's, it's pretty much the same the same you know sort of detail that we looked at for the format only this time it is um listing out the actual dimensions that you need to have uh, for those spaces versus having the t like we saw um earlier but a lot of these are the same uh, you see it as the four inches there and everything let's read the notes it says contractors shall coordinate locations of the stringer with architectural drawings uh, provide a two by two by twelve deepen uh, deepen slab at the post. So, so that's just letting us know uh, what these dimensions are. Um, sounds like from here to here, that's going to be uh, two inches, uh, two feet. I'm sorry, from there to there. Um, that being part of the deepen slab. All right, so that's that's pretty easy to understand because that was similar to the one that we just looked at. Uh, this typical detail is the floor trough at kitchen. So, you know, a lot of times in commercial kitchens, you'll have a floor trough, uh, which is for the folks that come in and kind of do the cleaning. They're able to, I've, I've seen this before in a commercial kitchen. That is where they are, uh, where they're putting all the waste in this trough. So with that, it's kind of showing us more so how to do the rebar. So you can see that there. I mean, we've, we've been looking at rebar, so you should kind of understand uh, what you're looking at there. And all it's giving you is providing dimensions and saying that these are number four rebar and they're spaced every 18 inches. Every 18 inches, you should hit the center of one of these. Um, nothing really um, hard to understand about this, really, in my opinion. So let's just move on to the next one. The next typical details is the added slab reinforcement at wall openings. All right, so wherever there's a, uh, so this is a concrete wall, right? Let's read the note here at interior walls provide number fours, um, two and a half feet long each way at the face of wall. All right, so this is a wall here and these are openings in the wall and interior walls and so at the edge of the openings you're going to provide uh, this two and a half foot long uh, number four rebar at at the face of each wall and so this is your detail for a concrete slab a concrete stair on grade so this is a concrete that is isn't in a pan uh, this is you know um, let's say outside and so they're able to form and build the concrete stair without needing for it to be supported by like a steel stair so all of this is formed in place right here there are at each stair nosing at at the front of the stair you're going to place a number four rebar that's what you see right there all right and then um, it's saying that you also have number four rebars, 12 inches on center, and it's pointing to this one right here. Let's trace that all the way up. You'll have a, a mat of number fours that are 12 inches on center. And sort of above that, this is forming kind of a little cage, I guess you can say. And as you're looking around, you can see that this whole thing is consisting of the number four rebar. And that's that's what you see there, number four, number four, and uh, it some of the cases it lists out the quantity, three of them, three of them there, one there, and that sort of thing. So um, it's giving a a depth of the step, and that's going to be one foot, and so this is going to um, go three inches deep past the five inch slab on grade there. Uh, that's what the eight inches indicates. All right. Um, I don't see a typical detail for I. I believe that comes after H. 
So we'll just move right on to J. This is a floor sleeve thickened slab. So a lot of times, uh, or sometimes, you may have um, something that is that the concrete is poured around, something that's uh, kind of stable in place before the concrete is poured, and the purpose of it is to be somewhat embedded in the concrete. Here you have a metal sleeve. That's what's embedded in the ground, and so with that, uh, they want to thicken the slab here. So this is kind of like the detail that we've already seen about thickening the slab. Only um, you have number four, uh, number five rebar. I, I can't remember what the other one had, but you have number five rebar here, and it's just kind of giving you a layout of how this is going to look. Um, your your rebar, they want a five foot long number five uh, going that way. Uh, that's occurring at the slab. And then you've got three number threes, one, two, three, that are sitting along the bottom of this here rebar. And as far as a clearance, we need three inches of clearance from the bottom of this rebar to the bottom, uh, pretty much where the ground is. So that's what you're noticing here. It's a five inch slab on grade. And it's also showing uh, the, the finish. Um, like the flooring. That's what the rest of this thickness is. It says to see the plan. So this could be uh, concrete, or I'm sorry, this could be carpet or tile or um, could be artificial turf. Who knows? But this sleeve is going to sit all the way embedded in the finished floor as well as the concrete itself. So it gives a, 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 something else that we need to go and look at on the floor plan that's going to tell us the thickness of of this particular floor type so that's typical detail j moving right along to k now we have an elevator pit and now we'll introduce some other elements besides just concrete so um i don't know if you've seen an elevator pit before uh but i've seen a few and um when you're doing an elevator pit uh, a lot of times there is a five foot or so drop off from the regular old slab that everyone's walking on to the elevator pit. There's also always a sump pit. This is a two foot by two foot opening uh, meant for drainage. And let's just say for drainage purposes, uh, they put a pump in it and it pumps all the water that may gather at the bottom of this elevator uh, out. And so that's what that is. So here you'll see the connection between uh, these two elevations are going to be a CMU wall. And this is a eight inch CMU reinforced with number fives at 32 inches on center. So this is um, masonry wall with concrete poured in it um, and rebar in the concrete and that's what you see there let's zoom in a tad bit now a couple of things occur at the slab edge before you hop into the elevator pit uh, you're going to need a four inch by four inch angle at the door like this that is um, anchored to the concrete so on the opposite side of the elevator pit you have um, pretty much the same thing but it's it's also showing the rest of the masonry wall uh, I think this note is pretty much the same about the typical rebar and all of these are pretty much the same now the dowels it, it mentions dowels to match vertical reinforcement so these dowels are um, these dowels are sticking up um, after this slab is poured you'll have this portion sticking up and so um, as you see the CMU wall being built is this is kind of used as an anchor I guess is a good way to put it as an anchor and the other rebar that it's indicating needs to happen are attached to this dowel sometimes the dowel uh, may have epoxy um, at this point or within the slab just to keep it better uh, keep it better positioned and that right there is indicating a foundation drain a drain for the water uh, with crushed stone and filter fabric around it. So that's the elevator pit. And um, you can see there's a lot of rebar always around the elevator pits. And you'll just want to pay attention to these notes 
um, because it's pretty much putting together how the reinforcing is supposed to look. Um, this top and bottom indicates that this is going to be kind of like a a mat or uh, which, you know, imagine a sandwich in this case. A sandwich constructed with rebar running different directions. But that's all the time I'll spend on the elevator pit. Let's look at oh a typical detail for a column footing and pier. This will typically be the first step that you'll see um, in a foundation. It'll be to excavate the dirt and pour footings. And then from those footings, you'll pour piers and then attach the columns on top of that. So I may have covered this in my other video. I might have used this um, detail to look at, but we're just going to go over it uh, for everyone that's new. All right, so let's start from the bottom. Like I indicated, uh, the first thing we need to do is excavate all of this dirt back. Excavate all this dirt back, and you will form with your with your form work. You would form um, kind of like a mold to pour your footings in. Now, before of course you pour your footings, you already have your rebar in place. Um, so let's look at those details. What it's saying needs to happen so you have hook bars provide a standard 180 hook bar typical so that's what you see there they need three inches of clearance between the rebar right there and the edge of concrete and then um, dowels to match vertical reinforcement so your vertical reinforcement will come later but these dowels will be poured or will be in place when you pour this concrete and so uh, the same concept they're going to be sticking up and it's going to give the um, the guys that tie the rebar something to tie on to basically as they're forming this next portion which is the pier so the pier is more concrete that gets poured into a space as you can see it has more more rebar around it um, like you see uh, the rebar going across here there's three right there as you get to the top of this pier and that's probably because all of the weight that's going down right there i want to make sure to spread all that out and um then you attach your steel this is a steel column you'll attach that with anchor bolts that's the size of the anchor bolts and it's also saying that there should be an isolation joint around the column meaning that one of those uh there should be somewhat of a separation between the concrete around the column and everything outside of that so um if we were from a bird's eye view you would see this kind of in a circle or a square kind of portion just around the um around the concrete now it's giving some giving some instruction you're going to have a leveling plate uh, just to make sure that you know within the grout everything is level that's what the leveling plate is and then on top of that uh, you'll have your base plate and your column your base plate will uh, be bolted down and then your column sits right up there all right typical detail m is a wall footing and reinforcing for an eight inch non load bearing or non bearing unbraced masonry wall. So uh, a couple of things here. This is similar to what we just saw. This footing is poured as, as kind of a foundation or anchor for this masonry wall to be built. And there's a dowel sticking up and then this rebar is tied to there and um, only difference is uh, because this isn't load bearing, meaning that there's not something that this needs to support. It's not showing that concrete needs to be poured uh, into into the masonry. But at the top of this wall, there is what's called a bond beam. And this is a U-shaped block. You've seen the blocks like with the holes in it for the rebar. And then you've seen the solid blocks at the top. You have this U-shaped block and um you know concrete is poured into here with the rebar and this um, bonds the whole wall together uh, because this is a unbraced wall and normally if walls masonry walls are a certain height they need to be braced to something above it 
uh, just to keep it stable. In this case, it's calling this a eight inch by eight inch continuous bond beam with one number five rebar in it continuous. And that's what I just explained there. It's that eight by eight uh, U-shaped CMU block with concrete poured in and that is the one continuous number five. And our last detail here is the deepened slab and reinforcing for six inch unbraced um, non load bearing wall. So this is just a deepened slab uh, in the same scenario. And uh, we've talked about deepened slabs and we've seen a few of these details uh, just in our session right now. So that has been it for this video. Pretty lengthy. I might chop it up. Um, I don't know. If this comes in three parts, then I chopped it up. Um, otherwise, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.